How many of you saw the movie this afternoon, Contradiction? Wasn't that a wonderful movie? Um, the filmmaker, the producer, Jeremiah Camara, is here today. We talked with him on our radio show just a few weeks ago about the movie. It really, really fascinating. We're going to have a chance to see it again later tonight. For those of you who are on the West Coast and you don't want to, you know, you can stay up later, we're going to show it again later tonight. So. We just have a brief amount of time uh, for Jeremiah. Jeremiah Camara is a, he's a writer, he's a poet, he's an award-winning poet. He's the author of the books, Holy Lockdown, Does the Church Limit Black Progress? And The New Doubting Thomas, The Bible, Black Folks, and Blind Belief. He'll be signing copies of his book, Doubting Thomas, at the conclusion of tonight's program. He's the creator of the very popular YouTube series, Slave Sermons. You can look that up online, Slave Sermons. He's based in Atlanta where he lives with his wife of 26 years. 26 is good, that's A to Z, so that's an accomplishment. Jeremiah has won several poetry awards, most notably the National Black Theater in Harlem. And he's performed poetry at the prestigious Apollo Theater. He's the author of a collection of poetry called Smoke and Haze dealing with social injustice. He's notably the producer of this film, Contradiction, which many of you saw today, which explores how faith in a supernatural creator is affecting society, particular African Americans. He's appeared on CNN, he's spoken at colleges and universities, at film festivals, and gatherings of other great minds. I met Jeremiah, when was that, in 2000, three or four years ago, in Manila, Philippines. We were both speaking there for the very first Philippine atheist National Atheist Association, which was really exciting, and he gave a great talk. So uh, if, if you didn't have a chance to watch it, you can watch it later tonight. So Jeremiah, where are you? Are you, are you here somewhere, hiding? Uh, come on up, yeah. Uh, Jeremiah Camara. He's a real doubting Thomas, so he only has a brief amount of time, so if you, if, if you can do it like 30 minutes or leave questions or um, whatever, I'm sure people will have questions. 30 Thank minutes you. here, right now? That, that's your time, 30 <laughs> minutes, that's it. Okay, yeah. I, I wasn't prepared for it. Um, well, you can take, do questions then. If you yeah, we, we can do questions. Um, wow, I, we wouldn't even be here if Jesus would have just stayed a carpenter, you know what I mean? <laughs> You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, it, it, the Bible never made sense to me, especially the part, you know, where it said that God made the world in, in about a week. I know that was a lie. Even Mexicans couldn't have done that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, um, when we met, like Dan said, we've been married 26 years, you know. Um, she says she was an atheist, but I, I didn't believe her. Because the first time, you know, she saw my body, she just kept saying, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> first time I saw her, I was like, Lord, have mercy, you know. <laughs> You know, but uh, <laughs> you, you could, you know, my, the first time I was um, ever in front of a mic, I was doing stand-up comedy. So you, you saw a lot of the humor, you know, in, um, <clears throat> in the movie. So, um, you know, um, any, any, how many people did get a chance to see the movie? <clears throat> okay, cool. Uh, so, um, there were the first session that we had, we didn't get a chance to do a Q&A. So I know there was, it was really packed in there. It was standing room only. So if anybody, you know, from that first session has any questions that they want to ask, I'd be more than happy uh, to ask. I'll just tell you this. I was born and raised in Cincinnati, Ohio. I didn't really come from a religious family, uh, to be honest with you. 
We went to church, but my mother, I, I really didn't have that opposition at home like a lot of blacks do have. You know, my, my parents were behind me 100% everything that I uh, did. You know, it's my mom, she's 87 years old now. And um, she's like, look, go get them. You know, and she has my books and she gives her books to my, you know, her friends and stuff like that. <clears throat> And I'm just so glad that I have a mom like that who's in my corner. So I really didn't have that opposition. I did manage to go to church quite often. I, I was seeking this spirit, you know. I wanted to fall out and pass out and speak in tongue and all that kind of stuff too, you know. But every time I tried to speak in tongue, you know, it just didn't work. I just kept saying, you know, yabba dabba do, you know. It just. <laughs> It never worked for me, you know. <laughs> and so um, <clears throat> here we are at Freedom From Religion Foundation. I just want to thank, you know, Dan Barker and Annie Laurie Gaylor. I mean, you guys put on, this is tremendous. You know, this is tremendous. Everything is just. <clears throat> You know, and the whole staff, everybody that put this thing together from the hotel to this facility to everything. I just want to thank you for, for, for having me out. Uh, Dan and I, we had a you know, real good time in the Philippines and I get kind of fiery sometimes when I speak. So they call me the reverse preacher, you know, <laughs> I actually preach the opposite of what you think with my emotions. But I mean, I learned that in the black church, there's a lot of entertainment there. You, you all have seen me with this glove on. It's Dan's fault, actually. <clears throat> I have a pinched nerve in my hand, and it's, it's all because of Dan, because, uh, you know, I'm an aspiring pianist, right? And uh, I said, uh, Dan, can you spare, like, you know, a cup, you know, some time where I can get in there and play some of the pianos? He said, <clears throat> you know, when I told him a while back I was playing the piano, he said, listen, man, I got three things, the three most important things for becoming a pianist. He said, the first thing is practice. I said, okay. He said, the second thing is practice. <laughs> I said, okay. He said, but the third thing is practice. <clears throat> and I kept practicing and practicing. I wound up getting a pinched nerve in my palm, you know. <laughs> so hopefully you don't mind, I'll just give you a fist bump as opposed to that. So, all right, we can get on with the Q&A. Yeah. Hi. Scream it if you prefer. Oh, there we go. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Jeremiah. So we Hi. saw the movie this afternoon. It was wonderful. I know that Thank you. many people here enjoyed it. Um, you know, what has been the, in this context today, there's a lot of like-minded people who certainly uh, were enjoying the film and, certain, and took, took it the way I certain you intended. What is the response, you know, let's say from either some of the people that are in the film who, you know, it is their own words. They don't come off looking all that, you know, well, or maybe when you showed it, you know, to like, let's say, communities or in places where they, you, you don't have a like-minded group of people, you know, what, what kind of reactions do you get from, from this, uh, this type of film? I think that the most surprising thing so far was the lack of backlash. We just, and I think the reason is because in order to, uh, you know, defend yourself, you have to know a little bit about your religion. And they don't know anything about it. <laughs> you know, so uh, there's people that are, like, one person, you know, she came up to me <clears throat> and she said, uh, you know, you, you just made, a, we had like 400 people at our premiere, you know. And she came up to him, she said, you just made all of, all of our, uh, all of Christians, you know, just look stupid, <laughs> you know? And I didn't debate them in the movie. I just let everyone talk. And it was, and, and one guy in New York, he said, don't make me look like a fool. And you did that. I didn't really make you do anything. <laughs> and so, um, no one has really challenged it. We've reached out to the church community. They won't have us, of course, you know, and a couple of the prominent preachers in Atlanta, they've seen the film, you know, but they won't touch it because they know that if this gets in the hands of their parishioners, 
they'll say, wow, you know, this stuff does make sense, you know, and so they just keep it away from there. But we just, it's been received positively for the most part, you know, but as an, as an, as a writer, a filmmaker and an artist and aspiring pianist, you know, I'm not always the, the best business mind behind it, you know, cause I'm busy making this, making it, you know, so I can use all the help that I can get. And I say that everywhere, <laughs> you know, but that's true. Cause if you notice, you know, there, it just takes one person to see the film and say, oh man, you know, and um, I, I couldn't get it in Bill Maher's hand. I saw him back in uh, uh, 2012 when it wasn't complete. But uh, I'd, I'd like to, you know, I, one lady mentioned, she said, have you been on NPR? That would be a dream to get on NPR. I would love to, to, to get on it so that everyone can know that, hey, there is a segment of African-Americans that don't subscribe to this stuff, you know? And as I travel around the country, you would be shocked at how many black people don't believe this stuff. I mean, you know, but they're in the closet with it and it's just hey i'm gonna lose everything if i come out with this you know my wife my mom my family they're gonna ostracize me so it's just this deep fear but once you present this stuff people will look at this and they'll say dag you know this makes a lot of sense but they'll have this cognitive dissonance you know ready for another one thank you First of all, I'd like to say you've done an important thing. Thank you. And uh, second of all, could you talk more about the money and how these, these wolves uh, exploit the black community all the way back from the Civil War and to the present today? Yeah. Well, let me, let me say this. Let's, let's, I'm going to bring up something a little more current. And one of the things that broke my heart and almost got me out of this business, I call, I've been doing this for like 25 years. You know, I was into this before a lot of, you know, this whole stuff was going on. And, um, <clears throat> but what happened recently this year almost made me give it up. I call it the Harriet Tubman business that I'm in, you know. And Harriet Tubman said, I could have freed more if they only knew they were slaves, you know. And, uh, but what just happened this year with Creflo Dollar, we call him Klepto Dollar. <laughs> he asked for $65 million. <laughs> he wound up getting $70 million for a plane. And the street that he's on in Atlanta is a street called Old National Highway. And the street is crime ridden. There's, there's all kinds of stuff that goes on on that street. And you get a plane so that you can go out and preach mythology around the world, but there's no way to measure who you've reached, whom you've reached, or what the effect of them being reached is gonna have on society. There's no way to measure it. And I thought about all the elderly people who could have got their mortgages paid. <clears throat> I thought of the science and math academies that you could have built with that money. I thought about the young men, African-American men who have felonies, who are now disenfranchised for life. Let me tell you, I did a lot of things when I was coming up as a teenager. I just didn't get caught. <laughs> Okay, I'm no better than a lot of the young black men who have felonies but will never get an opportunity. And so you have this, you hold this against them for life. Look at all of the training that $70 million, you could have, you know, make, produce, created trade schools and got them, just so much beside a jet plane. And so I was so disappointed, I almost just said to heck with it and, and, and you know, went into the medical marijuana business, you know? <laughs> you know, that's, I mean, because, I mean, there's a lot of that going on in the Bible anyway. You know, that's what the whole burning bush thing with Moses was about anyway. <laughs> you know, but uh, I, you know, when Dan, he called me, he said, hey, man, you know, 
I want you to come on out. So I wasn't going to pass that up. So I'm, and your feedback today, you know, from the movie has really, you know, inspired me even more. So I think I'm going to stay with this Harriet Tubman business a little bit longer. Yeah. 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 Uh, the black churches are involved in a lot of social activism. They work with jobs with justice. They were front and center in Missouri expansion of Medicaid, trying to get that through. And uh, in the Ferguson Commission, they're working with, with uh, officials on that. How do we keep that activism when, uh, you know, without the religion? <laughs> <laughs> Dan, um, John chapter 1, verse 1, right? You know that? by heart, and I can answer that question. Um, in the beginning, okay, I'm going to translate, okay. In, the, in John chapter, in the beginning, what's the word? Okay, in the beginning, that's going to be a tough job, and this is why. In the beginning, as far as African Americans in this country, was the church. And the and the church was with blacks, and blacks were with the church. And the word was God. And the church was the black community. You see where I'm going? There was no separation. Shame on you, Dan. I can say it in Greek. Okay. All things all things that were came into being because of him. Right. And everything that we've ever gotten, all the steps that we've made was because of the church. So this is how it is perceived in the black community. So when you take that away, you pretty much take everything away. Now, you'll take the social aspect away from it, but I don't know, my experience is this, and this is all I can go by. Being out of the church is so liberating. It feels so good to know as opposed to believe. In fact, our ancestors could have get, would have been eaten alive if we believed there wasn't something lurking behind those bushes as opposed to knowing that a predator was behind those bushes. Belief can get you in trouble. And I'm just free now. You know, and I would take that over the, the social aspect any day because, I mean, you take a lot of the people that you go to church with, you guys put on airs. I mean, I remember one time I was with my church community and um, we, they're so judgmental. Christians are some of the meanest people out here. <laughs> And um, I was sitting there, and uh, they looked over at, we were at a restaurant, and there was this guy drinking a beer, you know? And you know, the slogan of Miller is, it, the can says, Miller High Life. And he looked at him, he said, look at that. If he only knew what the high life was. And I wanted a beer so badly, <laughs> you know, I just. So I just saw the whole charades and all of that kind of stuff. And you guys heard my story about Martin Luther King and his assistant on the second one, about how he uh, was so protective of me interviewing Martin Luther King and just was just so uncooperative. And later that night, I went to my hotel room and I got a phone call about 11.45 that night. He said, Jeremiah, I have watched 11 of your slave sermons. And I'm telling you, I was thinking the same thing. He was so immersed in the church. Everything he did, he bowled with the church. He ate with them, everything. And now he's out the church, and he has this freedom, this liberty. And it just feels so much better than putting on these airs and staying around people you really don't like in the first place, you know? <laughs> yes. Um, my husband and I were just overwhelmed with your film. We really very impressed and we were wondering, how long did it take to do this? What is the oldest picture you had and the newest picture? Wow, it took 18 months to do. 
Uh, the oldest picture that I had, probably that, uh, probably that praise house, I think it said. Or oh, well, when the missionaries were, were from Europe and they were in Africa, that went way back, like 1800s. And the newest one, I can't recall what the newest one was. I don't you really know. You had Pope Frank there, didn't you? I'm sorry? You had Pope Frank, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did. That's pretty new. Yeah, that's pretty new. And he's an atheist. You know. <laughs> <laughs> he is. And so is Obama. So, one more question. Okay. Just one last question. <laughs> one last question. <laughs> okay. Um, what are you working on now? What are we going to see next from you? I don't know. I, I may do some comedy. You know, I mean, I, I've been praying about it. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I know God is not going to answer my prayers. He didn't. Here's his son on the cross crying out for help, and he said to hell with him, so I know he's not going to help me out. <laughs> You know, he has all these mansions in heaven, but let his son be born in a filthy manger. I mean, what kind of father is that, you know? So I don't know. I don't know, but we'll see. I don't, I'm, just, I'm in between projects right now, but I got to do something because I have a creative itch. That I got to do something. But thanks for coming out. I appreciate you guys and looking forward to coming again. Thank you.